the empennage, also known as the tail or tail assembly, of most aircraft gives stability to the aircraft, in a similar way to the feathers on an arrow. The term derives from the French for this. Most aircraft feature an empennage incorporating vertical and horizontal stabilizing surfaces which stabilize the flight dynamics of yaw and pitch, as well as housing control surfaces. In spite of effective control surfaces, many early aircraft that lacked a stabilizing empennage were virtually unflyable. Even so-called tailless aircraft usually have a tail fin. Heavier than air aircraft without any kind of empennage are rare. Structure, structurally, the empennage consists of the entire tail assembly, including the fin, the tail plane and the part of the fuselage to which these are attached. On an airliner this would be all the flying and control surfaces behind the rear pressure bulkhead. The front, usually fixed section of the tail plane is called the tail plane or horizontal stabilizer and is used to provide pitch stability. The rear section is called the elevator and is usually hinged to the horizontal stabilizer. The elevator is a movable aerofoil that controls changes in pitch, the up and down motion of the aircraft's nose. Some aircraft employ an all-moving stabilizer and elevators in one unit, known as a stabilator. The vertical tail structure has a fixed front section called the vertical stabilizer, used to restrict side-to-side -side motion of the aircraft. The rear section of the vertical fin is the rudder, a movable aerofoil that is used to turn the aircraft in combination with the ailerons. Some aircraft are fitted with a tail assembly that is hinged to pivot in two axes forward of the fin and stabilizer, in an arrangement referred to as a movable tail. The entire empennage is rotated vertically to actuate the horizontal stabilizer, and sideways to actuate the fin. The aircraft's cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder are often located in the empennage, because the aft of the aircraft provides better protection for these in most aircraft crashes. Trim In some aircraft trim devices are provided to eliminate the need for the pilot to maintain constant pressure on the elevator or rudder controls. The trim device may be, a trim tab on the rear of the elevators or rudder which act to change the aerodynamic load on the surface usually controlled by a cockpit wheel or crank. An adjustable stabilizer into which the stabilizer may be hinged at its bar and adjustably jacked a few degrees in incidents either up or down. Usually controlled by a cockpit crank. A bungee trim system which uses a spring to provide an adjustable preload in the controls. Usually controlled by a cockpit lever. An anti-servo tab used to trim some elevators and stabilators as well as increased control force feel. Usually controlled by a cockpit wheel or crank. A servo tab used to move the main control surface, as well as act as a trim tab. Usually controlled by a cockpit wheel or crank. Multi-engined aircraft often have trim tabs on the rudder to reduce the pilot effort required to keep the aircraft straight in situations of asymmetrical thrust such as single-engine operations. Tail configurations, aircraft empennage designs may be classified broadly according to the fin and tail plane configurations. The overall shapes of individual tail surfaces are similar to wing plan forms. Tail planes. The tail plane comprises the tail-mounted fixed horizontal stabilizer and movable elevator. Besides its plan form, it is characterized by number of tail planes, from 0 to 3, location of tailplane, mounted high, mid or low on the fuselage, fin or tail booms, fixed stabilizer and movable elevator surfaces, or a single combined stabilator or flying tail. Some locations have been given special names, cruciform tail, the horizontal stabilizers are placed midway up the vertical stabilizer, giving the appearance of a cross when viewed from the front. Cruciform tails are often used to keep the horizontal stabilizers out of the engine wake, while avoiding many of the disadvantages of a T-tail. Examples include the Hawker Seahawk and Douglas A4 Skyhawk. T-tail, the horizontal stabilizer is mounted on top of the fin, creating a T-shape when viewed from the front. T-tails keep the stabilizers out of the engine wake, and give better pitch control. T-tails have a good glide ratio and are more efficient on low-speed aircraft. However, T-tails are more likely to enter a deep stall, and are more difficult to recover from a spin. T-tails must be stronger, 
and therefore heavier than conventional tails. T-tails also have a larger radar cross-section. Examples include the Gloucester Javelin, Boeing 727 and McDonnell Douglas DC-9. Fins, the fin comprises the fixed vertical stabilizer and rudder. Besides its profile, it is characterized by, number of fins, usually one or two. Location of fins, on the fuselage, tail plane, tail booms or wings, twin fins may be mounted at various points, twin tail A twin tail, also called an H tail, consists of two small vertical stabilizers on either side of the horizontal stabilizer. Examples include the Antonov and 225 Maria, B-25 Mitchell, Avro Lancaster, and ERCO at Coop. Twin Boom A Twin Boom has two fuselages or booms, with a vertical stabilizer on each, and a horizontal stabilizer between them. Examples include the P-38 Lightning, De Havilland Vampire, Sadler Vampire, and Edgerly Optica. Wing-mounted mudwing is on the F-7U Cutlass or on the wingtips as on the Handley Page Manx and Rattan Long EZ. Unusual fin configurations include, no fin, as on the McDonnell Douglas 1036. This configuration is sometimes incorrectly referred to as tailless. Multiple fins, examples include the Lockheed Constellation, Belanca 14-13, and the Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye. Ventral fin, underneath the fuselage. Often used in addition to a conventional fin is on the V-index tails, an alternative to the fin and tail plane approach is provided by the V-tail and X-tail designs. Here, the tail surfaces are set at diagonal angles, with each surface contributing to both pitch and yaw. The control surfaces, sometimes called rudervators, act differentially to provide yaw control and act together to provide pitch control. V-tail, a V-tail can be lighter than a conventional tail in some situations and produce less drag, as on the Fuqua Magister Trainer, Northrop Grumman RQ-4 Global Hawk a PV Index 37 spacecraft. A V-tail may also have a smaller radar signature. Other aircraft featuring a V-tail include the BH Craft Model 35 Bonanza, and Davis Dar II. A slight modification to the V-tail can be found on the YX and Monit Moni called a Y-tail. Inverted V-tail, the unmanned predator uses an inverted V-tail as do the Lazar and Mini IMP. X-tail. The Lockheed XFV and Convair XFY Pogo both featured X tails, which were reinforced and fitted with a wheel on each surface so that the craft could sit on its tail and take off and land vertically. Pelican The Pelican tail is an all flying variation on the V tail. It was proposed for the Boeing X 32 but abandoned, and has not yet been used on any aircraft. The design is claimed to have the advantages of greater pitch control and a smaller radar signature. Box kite tails, some of the earliest aircraft combined horizontal and vertical stabilizers in a box kite design, such as the 1910 Bristol Buxkite. Tailless. A tailless aircraft traditionally has all its horizontal control surfaces on its main wing surface. It has no horizontal stabilizer, either tail plane or canard foreplane. A tailless type usually still has a vertical stabilizing fin and control surface. However, NASA adopted the tailless description for the novel X-36 research aircraft which has a canard full plane but no vertical fin. The most successful tailless configuration has been the tailless delta, especially for combat aircraft. See also, fuselage, trijet, S-duct, references.